cheese skewers with cinnamon syrup. Chicken and waffles with apple compost. Braised pork shoulder with apple mustard. We, we went, went to Apple Fest. Fest. <laughs> That's the play we could have written. <laughs> <laughs> That's the world we could have lived in. It all seems so simple now. The three of us were in a car together on our way to this very theater when we found ourselves stopped at a stoplight right outside of the entrance to Apple Fest, Lincoln Square's free annual Fête la Tome, <laughs> celebrating apples of all things. <laughs> this seemingly so common, yet still somehow underrated poem de vie. <laughs> Abby, it was your car. You said earlier that day, out loud, in front of everyone, Invite me to things. I love fall. I want to do fall things with you guys. They went to a vote. I've heard a few different descriptions that are kind of useful. I've heard it called like sketch comedy, but sad. That's, that one's kind of mid. Uh, some people have, you know, compared it to TikTok in the way that like, there's like a high speed, it's like, a, there's like a high speed carousel of different images and ideas going past you. And some of them, some of them are, you're gonna connect with instantly and they'll be, and then they're gone. And some of them you're not gonna understand and then they're gone and it's like, you're, you're going to see some of everything, uh, I think, and that's part of what's important about it, is that you see things that are very direct and detailed and literal, and v things that are very abstract uh, and bizarre avant-garde multimedia and all kinds of different things. Like a comedy show, but there are moments of, oh, this is really not comedy. There, it, it's a... Uh, it's a theater experience where the fourth wall doesn't exist. So you're kind of just learning about people. Um, it's storytelling. It's like weird stuff. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the first day of the rest of your class. Uh, let's hear some play titles, starting with Andres. Yes. Uh, I have three titles. The first, uh, Practical Magic, comma, Cuntified. Then, Cleanliness is Close. And then the last one, you can call it Neo-Futurist Lobotomy. Full title, What I Wish I Could Do to My Brain, or a Neo-Futurist Lobotomy Visualized. Cool. Um, I have five. The first is On Power and Time by Mary Oliver. Our founding director started this project in 1988. Uh, the first shows were at Stage Left Theater here in Chicago. Officially, the Neo Futurists are a collective of wildly productive writer director performers uh, who create performance and other works uh, dedicated to reaching those unreached or unmoved by conventional theater and inspiring them to thought, feeling, and action. Uh, there, are, there are 13 of us who come from a variety of artistic disciplines, theater, comedy, uh, per performance art in a more like formal like gallery sense as well. That, that is what we agree on. We are a collective of writer, director, performers who create this work where we never play characters, uh, it's important to tell the truth. We work by a set of shared tenets that we collect and call neo-futurism. And that's kind of where we agree. We also agree that we 
conduct the business of the company and make artistic decisions horizontally without hierarchy. A neo-futurist is a person, a performer who makes work that is live performance fr uh, from their own life, inspired by their own life, um, with a special attenuation to honesty and topicality and speed. The honesty is the coolest part. Um, that's what, kind of what it's all about, and that's the only reason any of us thinks it matters at all, um, is because we're just being as honest as we possibly can. Um, yeah, we, we, have, we have a set of tenets or whatever. Honesty is one of them. Truth on stage is another one of them separately. And so we're kind of doubling down on how actual we want to be. OK, this would be, this would include three audience members. So the way this would work is, um, let me show you the song, I guess. Cool. Three of us before the show would, kind of like you did for um, Summer Residue, would talk to one audience member each. So this is three Neos, and each, of, each Neo gets one audience member. So you get find one audience member in the uh, audience before the show, and just like, do you want to be in a play with me? It's going to be this one. You'll just come up and sit on this block with me, and you, that's all you need to know. Um, but just getting them beforehand. When the play is called, you get your person. There's three blocks, one in each down spot, and you're sitting on the block with your buddy with your audience buddy, both like looking straight out. If you know, you, you can be like this way if you need room. It shouldn't feel it shouldn't be like goofy goofy, but it's also like it's snug on purpose. Cool. <laughs> um, great. Let's just go from some of the questions. I'm gonna skip ahead. Um, so I'm gonna ask this many questions, but no, I'm just gonna do a few for now. Cool. I'm gonna ask a lot of questions, question, question, question. How much do you love yourself? Seven. How much do you love the world? Nine. How much fear did you feel today? Four. Seven. How often do you give yourself a little treat? Ten. Three. How well do you get by? Eight. Four. How well can you do the hard things without fear of judgment? Four. How well can you do the hard things without fear of failure? Do you accept that to stop is not an option? Do you understand that pain is a part of it all? When will you breathe? When will you let it all out? Once you let it all out, then what will you do? Once you let it all out, then what will you do? Once you let it all out, then what will you do? All the world is rising, I'm black by you. I'm black is a live show that happens three times a week, 50 weeks a year, that is, a, that is an attempt to perform 30 ever-changing plays in 60 minutes. The process has pretty much stayed the same for, mo for kind of forever. Uh, the company is really rooted in traditions. So we'll start on Sunday. Sunday. We will have had an audience member roll a six-sided die. We add those two numbers up. That's the amount of plays that we are cutting um, from the menu. So when we are talking about cutting plays, we're thinking about, is a play um, still topical? Is a play still able to be done by this cast as it stands if one person has gone out of the show? We leave our show and leave our cleanup from the show knowing 
which plays will exist in the following week's menu and which ones uh, have been removed. That process of removing them is called cuts. So we take Monday to write and then on Tuesday we show up at 7 o'clock after most of us work and then we pitch all of our plays in a circle. We give feedback to those pitches as they are and then we talk about what plays would be best in the menu. The goal is not to make a balanced show, but balance is seen as a good thing. We stage and tech things all that same night, so by the end of that night, everything, everything's either ready to go or in a place where it will be ready to go as soon as the author has that prop or whatever they need. And we say, see you Friday. And then we don't see each other on Wednesday or Thursday. We come back together Friday. We rehearse for maybe, I think, two hours before the show. We kind of are just like, are we set for all 30 of the plays? And then at 10.30, we have a show featuring like all that work that was pitched on Tuesday and created just a few days before that. Show Friday, same thing on Saturday, same thing on Sunday. And then Sunday, we do cuts again, which is the meeting at the table where we do feedback and cut the old stuff, write new stuff for the following Tuesday. So just once. I like some kind of shift, even if it's just we put our feet back. Oh, oh I like that. We can like can that. we run it yeah. quick? Yeah, let's run that. Great. That's all the plays. Let's start with lining the neo futurists are a collective. The neo futurists are a collective of wildly prolific artists. Go. A collective is six pieces of dried up sponge sitting by the kitchen sink for three months, no one knowing if it's trash or a prop. A fist-sized gumball made from individually chewed pieces of gum sweating under a clip light. A uh, cute little knickknack sitting on my desk at work. Drinking water from a broken coffee mug. An unending to-do list hung with a magnet with everyone's names written in the margins. Twenty layers of black paint caked in glitter, blood, and milk. A collective is six pieces of dried up sponge sitting by the kitchen sink. It's ten different answers to one unsolvable problem. Saying goodbye, then staying all night. A Rolodex of dick appointments on that little demonic app on your phone. Knowing what we want, doubting how we'll get there. It's bringing the snacks this time, and knowing someone else will get them next time. Arguments followed by laughter, and beer, and then I love you before you leave. A collective is six pieces of dried up sponge. It's the unending pulse of an irregular heartbeat. A doorway to a windowsill. The horny chorus of cicadas sing to me on my morning commute. A steady hand in the dead of night. The way each leaf in a one pound salad box is individually weightless. One plank in a thousand matches. A collective is pieces and feelings and pieces and feelings and pieces and tender feelings, bolstered feelings, hurt feelings, no hard feelings, some hard feelings. Writing feels all kinds of different ways. Um, it can feel good, it can suck. It usually feels better when I like what I'm writing about, and I usually like what I'm writing about when I like what's going on in my life. It's kind of like this weird, especially with this work, because you're writing from your life, it's like, if my life's not good, I, ah, it's really hard to write about. I have an idea of what I want to talk about whenever I go into a run of, of the shows, um, and I kind of, I write a lot in the time in between runs, like, and a part of that is like, am I ready to tell this story yet? And then I kind of decide that in between. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm gonna write about the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And I'm gonna edit it. And I'm gonna take the time to give it its real shine, I guess, on paper. So that the, that's usually like day one of pitch. I'm so prepared. And then next week I'm like, um, what if we <laughs> put jello what if we threw jello at each other? I try first to go towards what I'm what my brain's attracted to, what I've just been gnawing over. If there's a phrase that is stuck in my head, if there's somebody I'm arguing with in my head, if there is a prop I really want to use that I just can't get out of my hands. That so I try to first go towards like what I'm attracted to. Um, what I've been thinking about on my own. Uh, there's also the element of then like going sort of like seeking, seeking sideways. So there's a certain element of just like walking around and being open or looking through um, the news or what other people are interested in. 
I didn't mean to read an article by a New York Times critic who claims that culture has come to a standstill and we just have to accept it, but I did. I don't know who asked him, and I don't know who he's trying to absolve. I try to be open to the divine. I want to be a saint in the same way that I want to be a firefighter. I want to be in control. Uh, but I'm no good at starving myself, and fire terrifies me. This critic seems to say that now that innovation has run out, we'll be forced to play an endless game of collage. And to that I say, welcome to our show. <laughs> I've been to New York City. I went looking for vestige of what I grew up loving, but I found people and buildings and people and buildings and buildings and food and water and stairs. And those are the building blocks of how I make my days. And oh, whoa, what a day though it was. Last week I went to see the reissue of Stop Making Sense, regurgitated into an audience. I'm just having so much fun and it's pushing me in ways of communication to be able to like articulate what's in my head quickly and clearly to my ensemble mates, to work hard to understand their ideas. What I've learned from being a neo-futurist, how to be a person, how to like, how to, how to make choices, how to be in the moment, how to listen, how to improvise, how to, how to arrive prepared, how to like, earn people's trust that I will continue to arrive prepared, uh, how to listen to other people, how to, I mean, there's so many things. When you arrive at the show, if we're if we're doing well, there's a line outside, uh, and so you'll come in our front door, go up the stairs. You'll you'll meet our, our house manager, who will give you <laughs> who will give you some kind of token, and you'll take that token into the state park, which is our like waiting area in in front of the theater, and you'll hang out in there until the cast because you'll hang out in there because. Inside the theater, the cast is like frantically like relearning the choreography they forgot over the last few days. Then the cast will open the doors and invite people to form two lines and start making their way into the theater. But first you have to roll and rolling means you pay based on the roll of die. Or if you have prepaid with a credit card online, you are refunded some amount based on the roll of a die. I have a lot of empathy for the audience. They're the biggest uh, wild card in every show. I'd say overall the audience is like a, another anonymous cast member. Um, and having a show where there's no fourth wall is like, it's, it's, it can be scary, but I think it's an exciting part of like challenging ourselves as artists. I'm here to explain to you how this show works. So when you step into this theater, you should have been handed a sheet of paper. Can everyone wave that sheet of paper above their head? Beautiful, thank you so much. Um, you should be looking at a list of 30 play titles. And I want you to peruse that list of play titles and find one that makes you feel excited or confused or angry or horny. And I want you to look to the left of that play title. There should be a little number there. And I want you to shout that number at me right now. Amazing. 
What you just did is you ordered a play. We are not going to perform the 30 plays in the order that you see them hung up on the line here. We are going to perform them in the order that you wish to see them in. And the way that we will know uh, that that is the play you want to see is we're going to say a very important keyword all night long. And that is your cue to call for the number of the following play that you wish to see. And that keyword is the word next. Hey! Every time you hear the word next, hey! we are going to listen for the first number that we hear. We are going to pull that number down from the line, set up for that play, say the title, and then we are going to say the word go. And everything that you see, feel, and experience after the word go is a play. It's going to be unlike any play you've ever seen before, because that would be plagiarism. If not, then that is wrong. On Friday and, Friday and Sunday, we will have had an audience member roll a six-sided die. We add those two numbers up. That's the amount of plays that we are cutting um, from the menu. So when we are talking about cutting plays, we're thinking about is a play um, still topical? Is a play still able to be done by this cast as it stands if one person has gone out of the show? Um, and we'll go through that process and we'll talk it out and then we'll talk about what we need for next week. I like this a lot. I like talking about the company in this way. I feel like um, it's, an, it, I think it's ripe with, you know, I don't know. I like the, this, this type, this texture of language in the show. Awesome. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna name the ones that we asterisked, and then I'm gonna, we're gonna go run the menu for keep it's. Um, so we've cut, again, we've cut 11 plays, <coughs> one, two, three. Sometimes it feels like neo-futurism is like a worldwide art movement, that people are doing the show in every country, whether we know about them or not, in this like weird way that is exciting. And sometimes it feels like we can't fill the house and uh, we're just doing the show for ourselves. Um, so I think for the future, I think that we're going to keep doing the show indefinitely and it'll always feel big and small at the same time. Part of why I like theater is because uh, everyone in the room chose to be there, chose to like bring their living, breathing human bodies there. And that's why I like gathering community um, ceremony in general and I think that our show because it occurs so frequently because it uh, happens at regular times all of the time has an element of ritual and ceremony to it that I think is really healthy and attractive for and a little bit lost in like contemporary American life. <laughs> I want everyone to come away understanding in a really deep, intuitive way that everyone is equipped to do work like this. You're, the stories that you have and the experiences you have and the ideas you have are worth sharing. And you can, you can tell those stories using anything you have at hand and you can make an experience that's worth witnessing and worth taking part in.